Hi pals, hope you're all well. Welcome to the start of another reading vlog. It's Tuesday morning and so I probably look a little bit sleepy than usual. I don't often do morning updates, um, but I'm curious to try this new kind of style where I do a bit more morning updates and a bit more kind of on the fly um, little clips and things just because my new schedule, I'm still getting used to it and still getting used to um, what, I'm, what my usual routine will actually be like and kind of trying to find a new routine so while all that is happening I think it's probably best to just update when I get a little bit of time and this morning I had a spare 15 minutes. So I have actually read a little bit since we last spoke in my last vlog. Instead of reading the book that I talked about possibly reading, in um, the sprints on Sunday I read Lumberjanes uh, volume 2. I thought I had read volume 1 but I think what I actually read is some kind of like graphic novel adaptation of Lumberjanes um, and I actually preferred the Lumberjanes like volumes than I did that first like graphic novel um, type thing so that's quite promising. I didn't love it though and I do think it was really quite forgettable um, but it was kind of fun adventure fantasy um, and had quite a lot of like little cute moments in it and kind of little kind of humorous moments in it so it fit the bill for my Pixarathon prompt which I did so that's me finished my route which is brilliant I'm really happy with that. I also started an audiobook on my commute yesterday so I started Strange Beasts of China um, which is by if I remember rightly it's by Yan Ge and translated by Jeremy Tiang um, but I'll put them in the description box down below the kind of details. Um, and I'm absolutely loving that so far. Like I got to work and I was like, oh, I've just stopped, I've stopped listening to this and I'm just really, really enjoying myself. It's kind of like interconnected short stories and I believe it's set in China and it's about the kind of strange beasts of China as the title suggests. But you meet all these really, really interesting like beasts or like characters through the eyes of, um, I guess, a human, a norm, like a human form person and um, you kind of discovering these beasts together. I just really love it and the beasts are like so well described and you can like visually picture them and like sense the kind of presence that they have and also you kind of see the impact they have on other people and things like that. I'm just really really loving it. I think if you love like almost like a character kind of study but each chapter is a different beast at least so far um, and you're kind of exploring um, each beast, I guess, with our narrator. So I'm loving it. I'm not. Sh I don't think it's for everyone, but um, it's definitely doing something for me. And I'm not quite sure what exactly it is. If it's tickling my character, um, my need for good character, or or maybe it's just world building. It's just really, really good so far. I also last night. See, I did. I did actually read quite a lot yesterday. I should have updated yesterday. Um, that's when the first clips that were in this vlog were filmed. But I also um, was reading a graphic memoir, graphic novel. Um, it's called Papaya Salad by Elisa Masalari um, and translated by... This is where I'm getting my points for my Women in Translation titles now. I seem to be back in a groove with my translated fiction, which is absolutely brilliant. I'm loving it. Um, some of the best fiction I read in a year is translated. Um, it's translated by Carla Roncalli di Montorio um, and it's really, really beautifully illustrated. Like, this cover is beautiful, but even inside the illustrations are just even more stunning. And the colour palette is like this kind of pastel-y, I'm hoping you can see that, kind of pastel-y pinks and blues. Um, and it's just gorgeous. Like. I just absolutely loved the illustrations. I cannot stress that enough. Um, and it, it's kind of a really unusual story. So it's about a Thai gentleman who is becomes interested in foreign languages and becomes interested in the idea of traveling across the world. And in order to do so, he enlists in the army. Now this is 1940s, so it's quite a interesting time to be traveling shall we say and he experiences that um because he goes to europe and um he i think he lands he, he travels quite a few places i think initially he's supposed to go to germany but then um he says hitler kind of came in the way of that and um then he goes uh, to italy first of all so he lands in italy in venice 
and that was all like beautifully illustrated um, and then he eventually goes to Austria and he works in like the embassies and stuff like that so um, yeah he has really quite an interesting experience even just from that point of view and it's told through the lens of a child because we have this great uncle who she's gone to visit and um, he's telling her this story of his life and then she decides to kind of create it in this graphic illustrated um, format. Just honestly could not sing this, the praises of this one high enough. I absolutely loved it. So I've had a successful reading week so far, starting my audiobook which I'm loving, reading this graphic novel which I loved um, and kind of looking forward to seeing what else the, the week will hold. I don't have anything particularly planned but I didn't last week either and end up going to the library and all the rest of it so what I better do is I better get to work, better start heading off. Um, I thought I would show you my outfit before I go so I'll do that just now and then I'll get on the move. So it's quite simple today, I am just wearing a like black and white striped t-shirt, this is actually not new. Um, what I'll do is I'll pop on the screen a image of what I wore yesterday because I think it's a little bit more um, of my new things I'm wearing yesterday. But this cardigan is new, so it's like a longer length cardigan and these shoes are new. So um, these are Pumas, which is not a brand I've ever bought or worn before. Um, but I am really liking them, they're so, so comfortable. That's mainly what I went for, something comfy that I could walk in in because it's quite a long walk. And then these jeans I've had for probably kind of 18 months or so, um, but they're really, really comfy and um, they kind of look reasonably smart. So um, I kind of can get away with them, I suppose. Um, but yes, so yesterday I was wearing like a green top um, with some necklaces as well. Today I've got on the same earrings I was wearing yesterday. I don't know if you can see that, how clear that is, but um, I've got on these little hoop, gold hoop earrings. And yeah, so it's just quite simple and monochrome, I guess most things in um, Iceland when you go shopping are quite kind of monochrome or pale colours, um, kind of pastel is often what you find in the shops here but I think it looks quite smart, I think the cardigan kind of takes it to a different kind of, a more kind of formal place I suppose um, when I was wearing it just as the jeans and t-shirt it was it was still nice but just I think this cardigan, I really really like this cardigan so um, yeah that's what I'm wearing today and I better get on the move and get going just now so I will speak to you uh, later on. Good morning, it's Saturday and I'm having a very, very chilled weekend this weekend. That's my plan anyway. Um, I want to do some baking and read quite a lot of books. That's kind of my thinking. I just want a cosy weekend in the flat though because I've been out and about at work all week and in the office and stuff like that and it feels like it's been ages since I've had some sort of proper um, time at home and I think when I've come from working at home like every single day it feels kind of weird to be now not really doing so so yeah I'm looking forward to just having some cozy time at home and the weather's not great so it's a good excuse to be inside as well I'm going to bake some um, cinnamon buns so I thought I would kind of film that and I'll give you a proper reading update with what I've read this week um, soon um, and I'm also going to show you my plants because my plants have been having some really nice growth on them recently um, and one of them has sprouted flowers for the first time in about two years so that is really really exciting for, for me little um, plant lady uh, that I am so um, yeah I'll show you that and I'll be baking I'm just going to pop a cup pop up pop a pot of coffee on as well, which Chris will be very happy to hear. Um, he's smiling behind the camera. And yeah, I'll take you with me and show you my sort of cosy reading day at home.
I said I was going to show you my plants as well, so I thought I would just start with this one. This is one that I showed in a video many moons ago, and it was very, very small in comparison to what it is now. It had only two small leaves in the first pot, and then in the second pot it had nowhere near as many as it has just now. It's really, really flourished. It's just looking so healthy and it keeps sprouting and there's all these little growths of the kind of air roots which are just looking like it's just going to keep growing and growing. You can kind of see in there quite a few um, air roots coming out as well and, and some of them are even kind of becoming earth roots like this one here which has kind of implanted itself into the pot a bit more um, but yeah I just think it looks so healthy and it's totally thriving there in this new kind of pot situation um, the other one that you will have seen recently is my orchid excuse the mess in the background but my orchid is really really thriving as well it's still in full bloom. I'm expecting those flowers to kind of drop off at some point. I've been thinking it might be happening for a while. Um, but actually, it just seems to be continuing to thrive. There was a period of time when I first moved into this pot and I changed the um, bark. I don't know if you remember me doing that in a vlog, a previous vlog. Um, but at that point in time, the leaves became orange and quite a few of the leaves dropped off. So I had about sort of six or eight leaves and now I only have two. But I'm glad that it hasn't progressed to those two leaves, at least so far, touch wood. Um, it hasn't progressed to those leaves. Um, and it's kind of, it, I've managed to kind of break off the um, leaves. You can kind of see probably in there where they, where they were attached. Um, but yeah, it's really thriving right there just now and it's just loving this little spot. It's lived in this spot for the two years since we first got it and it just absolutely loves it, it totally thrives in this kind of window window placement. I've moved this one to a place where it doesn't usually sit um, because it usually sits next to um, the fairy liquid and uh, our sink and stuff and um, I've moved it just to kind of show you it properly. But you can see there's this kind of pink flower coming out which is totally um, new. It, when I first bought it, it had two big pink um, flowers. If I can find a picture of it, I'll, I'll put it on the screen, but I'm not sure if I still have any pictures of it. Um, but it had these huge sort of, I'll try and get a close of this pink. It had these two huge pink um, blossoms, like big um, kind of unusual looking flowerings. And then they just randomly died. And this was one of my first kind of plants. And I was really, really worried that I had totally, in fact, look, there's, a, there's a second one. It's coming out in bloom there as well. You can just kind of see it peeking out in there, um, this kind of pink. I don't know if you can see that very well, but um, but yeah, both of the heads, both of the flower heads kind of dropped off in quite a dramatic fashion. I think they turned a funny colour and dropped off and I'd never had this kind of plant before and never knew anything about it. And so I was really, really worried that I had done something wrong. Um, but then I, I read about it online, it said that's quite normal, that it will just die and that it should reflower. And I've been waiting for two years for it to reflower and finally it is delivering some lovely pink blossoms so I'm really really pleased that I'm seeing that coming through again. Um, this has lived in the same bag, I think it's called like a plant sack or something. We bought it from a market when we were in York in England just before we moved to Iceland and I thought I'll take that with me and it'll be a nice little kind of taste of home and we got it in this bluey greeny colour um, kind of like the Northern Lights was kind of our thinking so um, it's kind of a wee bit of kind of the mix between the UK and Iceland. Um, I'll show you my final plant which I got for my bookcase and just kind of show you how that's doing. It seems to be doing pretty healthy as well. So last but not least, there's the little plant that I bought for my bookcase. I've forgotten the name of this plant now, but I did actually purposely go out and buy it because I thought it was cute and a few people said that it would probably do quite well in a kind of bookshelf environment. So it's looking really cute in that positioning and thankfully it's like thriving um, or at least it's healthy. I think it needs a little water just now. But um, yeah, it's staying alive, which was my main concern. I would get this plant and it would just die um, because it isn't the brightest room in our flat and all the other plants live in quite bright spaces. So I was worried about that. But it seems to be doing well. And one of my colleagues actually suggested that they might bring in a clipping for me of one of their plants, which sounds like it could be quite similar to this one if it's not the same one. But I look forward to that. That'd be so nice to have a little clipping of someone else's plant and I might add it to my bookshelf if 
if that all comes together. But yeah, I'm really pleased. They all seem to be healthy and thriving. Um, they're all scattered about my flat, so I can't like show you them all together or something. Um, but yeah, it's just, I love having houseplants and it's one of my things that when we moved here, I said, I really want to get some houseplants and kind of make my house feel like home. Um, and yeah. It's done the trick. I genuinely feel so much better for my day of just baking and reading and pottering about my plants and stuff like that. I think it's been just kind of what I needed. This week my anxiety has been really high, which um, I think might be partly kind of hormonal, um, but might also be related to like getting in my head quite a lot about um, not being able to understand everything everyone's saying around me. And um, I think when you get in your head about that kind of stuff, it kind of is a... Um, like a, a vicious cycle maybe is a phrase or like um, a steep slope maybe um, either way you kind of descends quite quickly into, into quite bad anxiety so I'm hoping next week to kind of get out of my head a bit more about that and just kind of enjoy understanding as much as I am understanding because when I first came here I literally did not speak any Icelandic and the fact that now I can kind of understand probably about 30% of the conversation that's happening around me and I can kind of understand what they're talking about even if I don't know necessarily exactly what everybody is saying um, and yeah I've had little small victories people have spoken to me in Icelandic and I have understood exactly what they're saying which I think even probably a year ago I wouldn't have had that experience um, and so my Icelandic has come on quite far and I think being around it so constantly like when I've learned languages in school before I know that this is like the best way for me to learn like properly um, adopt language I guess is to be around it and like immerse in it I know a lot of people say that but I think in Iceland it's actually really hard to have that kind of experience unless you maybe are married to an Icelandic person or you um, are somehow related to an Icelandic person or something, the chances of you being exposed to Icelandic on any great scale are actually quite slim because you can go to, you can go to shops, you can live your life completely in English here. You don't actually, um, as a necessity, you don't need to learn Icelandic to survive here. But I think if you want to get involved in kind of cultural life or you want to um, get more engrossed in culture or you just maybe you want to learn a language for kind of the sake of socialising etc then you do need to be able to speak it properly or at least be able to have a understanding enough that you know what's going on around you. But I know that that kind of immersion is what works for me and so being in a team of people where kind of probably 20 out of 25 of my team are Icelandic. Um, I'm kind of around it a lot and I'm hearing it a lot and picking up new words, kind of sometimes just like searching what a word means. I'm also working um, in like translations and stuff. So I'm working with translated text. So I'm seeing new words and things like that. So I feel like my Icelandic's come on quite a long way even in just the two weeks I've worked there, which is something I never thought I would really say. But yeah, I'd like to get into like classes and stuff properly. I've done one level of classes and I'd like to continue. Um, and hopefully at some point be able to have a conversation. Um, I know that it's on my mind a lot this because um, at last night I was dreaming about um, my colleagues asking me to translate something from English into Icelandic to test to see how much I could write. I, I just kind of struggled through this exercise in my sleep and then I woke up and I thought, oh no. And I was very kind of stressed on waking up. So um, it's obviously on my mind a lot. I obviously um, need to kind of action something about it, like go sign up for a class or something. We have been trying for probably about five, six months now to get signed into a class and we just have had no luck finding like classes that we kind of think would suit us at times it would suit us and um, with a teacher that we think could suit us um, so yeah I would really like to get that moving with that though and kind of pursue that goal harder if you know what I mean. I'm also realizing with being in this job that I'm able to connect with my reading a bit better which sounds really strange but when I was living and working at home um, as a lot of us were, I found that I wasn't getting out of reading the same thing, um, which previously was that kind of feeling of escapism and a kind of opportunity to 
relax and decompress. Because I kind of am quite sort of sensitive, like I can kind of internalize a lot of things and I have like a really like rich inner life is kind of how people would typically describe it. And so my mind is very busy when I'm outside because it's taking in a lot of information, it's taking in a lot of processing, a lot of stuff. Um, and I found that when I would go home, I needed to relax fully and that like screen-based stuff doesn't necessarily give me that same feeling in the way that reading does. And reading really helps me in that way. And um, yeah, this week I've kind of noticed that I have been reading a lot and I think it's because I'm now finally again getting that thing out of reading that I love. And I think with like being around the Icelandic so much and kind of taking so much in, my brain's just busy a lot of the day and um, it's nice to kind of come home and, and read and just escape. So I have read a lot. I finished reading Strange Beasts of China, um, which I was really loving at the start. And then as I went on, I kind of fell out of love with it a little bit. Um, so at the start, I was kind of thinking this could be a five star read just kind of for context of what what kind of level we were, we're talking here. <laughs> I'm not somebody who gives out a lot of five star books, so uh, five star ratings. So for me, that's a pretty big deal. And then as I went on and on, I was kind of like, hmm, this is not really what I thought I was signing up for. Um, so it's all it follows kind of beasts in China and different um, different beasts that our narrator comes across in different ways. And sometimes, you know, they, she has different relationships with them. Sometimes she meets somebody who has a relationship with them, and she writes stories about each beast. And um, She's also involved with a professor who's studying beasts and there's kind of little mysteries about the beasts that kind of come out and each one is like a short story almost, but they're all interconnected and joined together by this narrator. Um, I understand why the narrator was there, but I feel like their role wasn't fully realised in the story um, and I felt like it could have been a bit more like strongly developed. I don't want to go fully into it because I'll obviously be filming a wrap up pretty soon, it's near the end of the month. Um, but yeah, I liked it but I didn't love it. Um, and I didn't love it as much as I was thinking when I started at, that I would, because I just was like, wow, this is gonna be a new favorite. And, and it wasn't that, but it was still really good. I also read Cry Wolf Girl, which is a very, very short comic and a kind of, it's got a very bright cover, but the actual tone inside is like blacks and reds um, and, it was just okay. I think it was by Ariel Slamet, Ariel Slamet Rees, which is the writer who wrote and illustrated Witchy, the comic, which I talk about a lot on this channel and I've talked to a lot of people about it. I just wanted to pick up something else from the writer and I saw this in my library's catalogue and put a hold on it. But it was just a bit disappointing. There was no real meat to the story um, and yeah, I, did, I don't want to go into too much depth at all of these because I will chat and chat and chat if I get given the opportunity so I'm trying to rein myself in but yeah I'll talk about it more in depth in my wrap up. Um, I also read, now I did read a lot this week, this is what I'm talking about, <laughs> I also read Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Osman which is the like most recent instalment in the Heartstopper series and um, I was up to date and just kind of waiting for my library to buy this in and they do tend to buy them in and they tend to be very very popular in my kind of local library and um, there's a section where they where they live where they live and there's always at least one or two of the, the issues out at times so I always really like seeing that I think it's really nice and um, this one explored more heavy themes like eating disorders family relationships and like healthy romantic relationships and um, which I thought was really interesting and it was a it was a bit of a kind of heavier take than some of the the previous issues um, in my opinion um, but then I picked up uh, another book. <laughs> um, to be fair, these are all kind of comics and sort of short reads. This is a poetry collection. It's called Here We Are and it's by Kartjan Ragnarsson. And it's a poetry collection, very creative. Um, you can tell that they're a linguist. You can tell they really love words and language and like playing with language. And I loved that playfulness. It was so uh, clever and like experimental. Even like including little bits of like Scots in the writing, I thought it was really really brilliant um, my favorite parts were like the public there's like a public service announcement so it's it kind of set around a city and they're kind of imagining the lives of people in the city through time um, and you're basically meeting different characters at different stages in their lives and 
just like little kind of snapshots of little moments in people's lives, building this image of the city that was very creative um, and yeah, loved the playing with languages and stuff like that, I thought it was really good. For me, this is definitely like a writer I'll watch out for more from, even though this particular one wasn't my favourite, like I really liked it but it wasn't necessarily a favourite. Um, I still think that the writer is somebody who, they're really young judging by their author profile um, and so like I think there'll be somebody who, like later in life, will have a really, really um, strong career, and it's somebody probably whose writing will be exported out of Iceland. I think this was written in English. It it only gets it's like a translated text. I think it was just straight up written in English. Um, they're an English literature stu student at um, I think at the at the university here. I think, um, and they wrote this in English. So yeah, uh, really clever, creative, interesting. Um, and I will definitely be watching it for more from them. And then finally today, and you might have just saw, I was just reading Elsewhere Home by Leila Abalela and I finished this off. Um, I, like, I, I like this, I think it got stronger as it went on for me. I don't know if that's because um, this is kind of spanning several years of Leila Abalela's writing. And um, I don't know if the later stories might be some of her newer, stories and um, my favorites were and ones I kind of tabbed were all in the kind of last section of the book and um, expecting to give um, was one the museum another and pages of fruit which is the final story was another one which I do think will kind of stick with me it's about like kind of authors and like the the way you uh, think about an author and then maybe when you meet them, them not being quite what you think they will be. Um, yeah, I really liked it. A lot of them are about like home and belonging, and a lot of them have connections to Scotland, which is another reason I really enjoyed it. And I liked kind of seeing Scotland through an immigrant's eyes and kind of thinking about it um, and how Scotland might or might not be a welcoming place to arrive. Um, and yeah, the kind of culture shocks as well that people would experience. So yeah, I had a very good reading week and I think that it was partly because it was giving me this kind of escape into books and um, I was really, really enjoying that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to next week. I'm not sure if I'll vlog in September, like as continuously as I have this month. Um, but I would love to get some like kind of um, autumn-y vlogs and I think we're kind of now turning the corner into autumn. The last couple of days have been a bit like less warm and a bit um, wetter and just a bit kind of more autumnal feeling. Um, and so I think we're kind of turning the corner into autumn. So I'd love to get some autumn, autumn-y vlogs, I guess, of Iceland because autumn is very short here. It lasts at most a couple of weeks, like, but um, it's so beautiful and so I want to kind of have that to look back on through the long, long winter which is ahead of me. And I know in the winter season I'll be vlogging more because the daylight hours are so short and I think it's just so much easier to kind of film when there is a little bit of daylight or you can kind of film a bit more in the darkness when there's when it's a vlog. So yeah, I think I'll be doing a bit more vlogs and stuff in winter. But do let me know if you enjoyed this kind of weekly vlogging style and um, maybe I'll consider doing it again into late September or something like that. It's my birthday in September, so I might do a bit of birthday vlogging. Um, but I do have quite a lot of videos that I would love to share with you throughout the month. So. Um, I might be focusing on some of that instead. Let's just, let's just see how it goes. I always think that with like booktube, youtube, um, it's just got to be fun. So if I'm enjoying what I'm doing, that's what matters to me. It's the most important thing, just to have a bit of fun with it, get a bit creative with it, and yeah, share some good books and hopefully recommend some to you. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you in my next one, which might be my journal spread for September or it might be a wrap up, I'm not sure. But both those videos will be coming very soon. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in my next one.